May God bless the memory of those who perished in Toledo. Yeah, it's not Toledo, jackass. If you're gonna go and uh, give a press conference pretending to have empathy uh, for the people who suffered in the shootings, it's El Paso, Texas. And by the way, Joe Biden also got this wrong. He thought it was Houston. And it's Dayton, Ohio, not Toledo, Ohio. And Biden got that wrong too. He thought it was Michigan. Just, if you, if you want to care, and you want to at least pretend to care because you're a slimy politician, take one second to figure out where the shooting happened. Yeah, it is strange that he mentioned Toledo because this was one of the speeches where he agreed to use a prompter because everyone knows if he doesn't use a prompter, he's gonna say things that are entirely inappropriate off the cuff. So there's the giant prompter right in front of him. It doesn't mention Toledo, it just says Texas and Ohio. So I don't know where he got Toledo from. No, because the minute he goes off that prompter, and then there were some some terrible things that he said, we're gonna get to in a second. But there was some good language against white supremacy for the first time ever, right? And you could read the sentences, we'll show them to you. There's no way he wrote those. Of course, they had to put it on a prompter so that he would actually say them. But the minute he goes off the prompter, he's like, oh, like in Toledo. God, no, stick with the prompter, idiot. So, and that prompter was gigantic, gigantic, and he still can't get it right. And they had to put out the White House transcript. And in the official transcript, they crossed out in Toledo because it's not in Toledo and the president's an idiot. Exactly. So, Let's go through all the different things Trump mentioned in his response speech. Starting with, to his credit, condemning white supremacy. The shooter in El Paso posted a manifesto online consumed by racist hate. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. So that's that's a fine statement, except I don't believe him because I have no doubt that either tomorrow or a few days from now, he'll fall back on the one campaign strategy that has gotten him in the position that he's in today, which is stoking racial tensions, exploiting racial divisions in the country, and saying the most hideous things about immigrants. By the way, again, over 24 migrants have died in US custody at the border. So we're in the business of killing people in America. So let's uh, let's quickly go to uh, graphic one because in the middle of this image, you will see the text from the manifesto that the shooter had posted online right before he committed this act of domestic terror. And on both sides, you'll see tweets from Donald Trump that reference specific words that were also used in the manifesto. So words like, Immigrant invasion, uh, takeover, those types of things were included in this, this killer's manifesto, showing that, yeah, white supremacy is a problem in the country, but the fish heads from the, uh, the fish rots from the head down. Donald Trump has been using uh, you know, racist rhetoric in order to prop himself up in his campaigns and in his presidency. So let me let me just talk about the prompter for one more second. Guys, look, slipping up about the city is the least of his problems. But when you see him read from the prompter, it's so obvious. Now look, do other presidents read from prompters? Absolutely, right? Do they usually check their speeches and edit them? Yes, does Trump, God knows, right? No, he doesn't. And, and he, he comes across as incredibly disingenuous when he reads the prompter. When he's the real Donald Trump, you know it. Oh, we had a very strong reaction, etc. right? When he's reading from a prompter, he reads like this. So uh, he said these words. These are good words. He said, these sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. Hate warps the mind, ravages the heart, and devours the soul. Does anyone believe Donald Trump wrote that? Of course not. And you want to know why no one believes he wrote that? Because this is what the real Donald Trump looks like. We also had people that were very fine people on both sides. That was his response after the hate march in Charlottesville, Virginia, which led to the murder of Heather Heyer by white supremacists. Look, it, it, over two dozen uh, terrorists, uh, right wing terrorists uh, that either carried out the attack or planned an attack have cited Donald Trump specifically, let alone the others that were encouraged by him and had similar language. But uh, about two dozen have literally said, 
Oh, I really like Donald Trump. This is the I was inspired by the message of Donald Trump, etc. One of the very first ones that happened was uh, not a, a, a shooting. It was uh, a couple of guys who beat down a homeless person and urinated on him. And and yes, and urinated on on him in in public because he was a Latino. Now, of course, he was a U.S. citizen. Who cares? That's a brown person. Let's go. And he's homeless. He can't help him uh, defend himself. Anything, right? Pick on the most powerless person based on race. And do that kind of horrific attack, right? You know what Donald Trump said afterwards? He said, well, uh, uh, I have very passionate followers and they love this country very much. In response to that attack, because not only does he encourage people with his overall rhetoric, but he specifically backs guys who do specific acts of violence uh, based on that rhetoric. Remember all the, uh, the rallies where he said, "Oh." Start beating people up like the good old days and I'll pay your legal bills. He has encouraged violence from day one. He's yes. not at all put off by it. He thinks there's very fine people on that side. So with that said, and we're gonna get to him glorifying violence in just a second. But there was a curious call for bipartisanship during his speech as well. Open wounds cannot heal if we are divided. We must seek real bipartisan solutions. We have to do that in a bipartisan manner. So <laughs> lack of bipartisanship isn't an issue coming from the Democrats in this case, right? Democrats in the House, by the way, have already passed gun control legislation. You wanna know where it's stalled, where there's a big bottleneck? It's with Massacre Mitch in the Senate. He has blocked legislation. He won't even bring it to the floor for a vote. So you want to talk about bipartisanship, take a good hard look at your own house, okay? And, and ironically, Trump tweeted about how, oh yeah, yeah, we can do this as long as we attach it to the kind of anti-immigration uh, quote unquote reform that I want. The guy in El Paso shot people because he thought there was an immigrant invasion. And your answer is to double down on that? As a solution yep. to the shootings, what kind of a monster does that? That's the real Donald Trump, not the one going, I would like to do bipartisan solutions. Yeah. What are you talking? Okay, check. The House already passed federal background checks. You're blocking it. You said you'd veto it. And so why don't you do the bipartisan thing that you claim? What an unbelievable liar. And let's take a quick look at where the American people stand, where the voters stand, and how the Republican Party incessantly turns its back on these voters. So according to Quinnipiac, universal background checks, 94% of Americans support it. Mandatory waiting periods to buy a gun so you can do a proper background check, 83% of Americans support that. Gun license requirement, 77% of Americans support that. The vast majority of Americans, including Republicans, do support common sense gun legislation. But Mitch McConnell will not bring that legislation to the floor for a vote, and there's a specific reason why. Again, he's accepting money from the NRA, so he has to act as the NRA's puppet. For him, that cold hard cash is way more important than saving people's lives. So with that said, let's get back to violence, because Trump thinks that glorifying violence, according to what he said in his speech, is a very, very bad thing. Take a look. We must stop the glorification of violence in our society. It is too easy today for troubled youth to surround themselves with a culture that celebrates violence. Okay, so with that said, let's take a look at a video of Trump glorifying violence. But how do you stop these people? You can't, there's no. That's only in the panhandle you can get away with that statement. Knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. I have plans on Afghanistan that if I wanted to win that war, Afghanistan would be wiped off the face of the earth. It would be gone. It would be over in literally in 10 days. He has been glorifying violence from the moment he started campaigning for president. Yeah, it, in the panhandle speech, uh, when he was talking about what do you do with this problem, he was specifically talking about immigrants. And the guy says, shoot them. And he laughs about it, like, <laughs> only in the panhandle. No, it turns out not only in the panhandle, also in El Paso, Texas. And when he uh, jokes about it, you can hear someone in the background say, Second Amendment. That's what the Second Amendment's for, right? Oh, Killing by the way. Innocent people who are fleeing for safety. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's amazing. And, and I'm glad you reminded me of that. And no one's talking about it today. I didn't see in any of the articles uh, or any of the coverage. Remember when during the campaign, he was started talking about a Second Amendment remedy for Hillary Clinton. Wow. I mean, we got past like all of these insane calls to violence over and over and over again. And now we're having a fake debate as to whether Donald Trump incited this kind of uh, white nationalism, demagoguery, and violence? Of course he did. Is he solely responsible? No. Is he partly responsible? Of obviously, obviously. It's like the fascists in Germany going, oh, oh, people got riled up against the Jews. I don't know where that came from. Oh, well, we looked around. We were looking for bipartisan solutions, couldn't come up with any. Yeah, I know where it came from. Are there Democrats going around saying, oh, the Mexicans are criminals and rapists? No, there aren't anybody saying that. Are there, are there Democrats? And I got a whole heap of problems with corporate Democrats, okay? But are any of them, even those guys, are any of them going around calling, goddamn Hispanic invasion? Is this somebody gonna do anything about it? The answer is no. There is one racist party in America. It is definitely the Republican Party. And that's why, by the way, you we talking about blaming Trump. I also blame the voters, the Republican voters, because the Republican voters had a choice of 17 people, and they're like, the most racist one, That's that right. one. We definitely want him. So don't complain, like we get to complain about mass shootings. You Republican voters, this is what you aided and abetted. You don't get to complain about it. Yeah, and I, look, I have to show you, because Trump isn't the only one. You're right, it is the voters, and Trump has emboldened people to, to carry out acts of violence or in the very least, really show people who they really are. So let's take a look at Tucker Carlson. I mean, he's done how many segments now where he uh, you know, goes after immigrants? In this one particular segment, uh, you know, he had a lower third titled, how exactly is diversity our strength? So what is it, our weakness? Of course, yeah. that's what they think, because because you're watering down the white race in America, and that's an obvious weakness. In reality, I could answer him for hours on how diversity is our strength, but he he doesn't want to have that intellectual conversation. He just wants to say diversity is the problem, isn't it? And implicit in all of their talk is isn't someone going to do anything about it? And hey, Tucker and and Trump, congratulations, somebody did something about it. And finally, Representative Steve King, how can we forget? Uh, when he was interviewed by the New York Times, he said, quote, white nationalist, white supremacist, Western civilization. How did that language become offensive? Why did I sit in classes teaching me about the merits of our history and our civilization? By the way, uh, coincidentally, J.D. Shulton announced his candidacy today against Steve King. He nearly beat him last time. If you don't like white nationalists being encouraged by politicians to do massacres, you should throw Steve King's ass out of Congress. He's a United States Congressman. That is an unbelievable shame for the rest of the country, let alone that district. You have a wonderful alternative. Go look up JD Shulton and make sure you support him to remove monsters like Steve King from Congress. And it's not just the white nationalism. Steve King, along with all of his Republican buddies, takes money from the NRA and purposely blocks legislation that would prevent these, at least have a shot at preventing these mass shootings. Why? Oh, Steve King takes money from the NRA. Get his ass out of Congress. On the go? Don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.